Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning us in again this week. This week, you'll see we're in the nave of the church because the eighth grade is getting their, uh, their annual graduation headshot pictures taken today in front of our customary fireplace. So we decided to come at you today from inside the nave of our beautiful church. We're going to start with um, some uh, words from uh, one of our fine parishioners, a lady named Catherine Murray, who is going to uh, speak with us about our obligatory Good Friday collection this week. So, Catherine, just come on in here. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Um, yes, I'm, um, I'm a parishioner. I've been a parishioner for about six years, and I serve as um, an usher at the Sunday Masses, and I'm happy to have gotten to know so many of you, pe so many of you uh, in the parish, and also I'm very grateful for how welcoming the parish has been. Uh, about six years ago, I made my first pilgrimage to the Holy Land on a trip sponsored by the Franciscans of the Holy Land. And ever since then, I've had an increasing appreciation for how precious the Holy Land is, how important, it's been, the pilgrimage has been, and the uh, Holy Land have been in my life and in my faith, and the important role of the Christians who live and work in the Holy Land. So today I'd like to give you some background on the Good Friday Collection, which is for the Holy Land, and I'd like to ask you to please join me in contributing generously to the, to the Good Friday Collection. By the way, I am not an expert on the Holy Land. I'm, I'm just a person who has been there and who appreciates it very much. I'm sure most of you have heard the term Holy Land, but some of you may wonder what it is. The Holy, La the Holy Land is a geographic area in the Middle East where there are holy sites associated with the life of Jesus, with other important events in early Christianity, and with the prophets. Examples of holy sites would include the place Jesus was born where he was crucified, and the place of the Transfiguration. So the Holy Land sites would be in what we know today to be the country of Israel, the Palestinian territories, and, and places in other countries too, including Jordan and um, Syria and Cyprus. The region is precious for Christians because the holy sites provide us with an opportunity to know God and our faith and, and really our life in, and our history in a very special way. The region is also important because there are holy sites for other religions, including for Judaism and Islam. I'd like to read a statement from the Kustos, Father Francesco Patton, which I believe characterizes the Holy Land very well. Quote, this land is loved and desired by many. All of us are called to take care of it, protect it, and feel it is ours. It is at the origin of our culture, our history, and our religion. This is why everyone should support it." Unquote. The annual Good Friday collection for the Holy Land has been taken up in Catholic communities and parishes since the 600s which is the time that Christians started traveling to what is now known as the Holy Land to find the holy sites and to worship at them. The Good Friday Collection provides an opportunity annually for Catholics to reflect on how important the holy sites are and to support and show solidarity with our Christian sisters and brothers who live and work in the Holy Land because they represent and preserve a Christian presence in the region. Christians are a minority in the Holy Land region. Many are poor and live under difficult circumstances. For perspective, Christians comprise about 17% of the population of Bethlehem and about 3% of the population of Jerusalem. The Christian population in the Holy Land has been declining steadily for decades given the ongoing conflicts in the Middle East. Proceeds from the Good Friday Collection for the Holy Land are spent to maintain and preserve Christian holy sites, to facilitate pilgrimages, 
to provide university scholarships and employment for Christians living in the region, and to support Catholic and Christian ministries, such as hospitals and schools, which serve not only Christians, but all people who live in the Holy Land region. So how can we support the Holy Land? Well, we can pray for the Holy Land and for all the people who live there. We can pray for peace, understanding, and mutual respect in the region. We can make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. I promise that it will be a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of your life. Thirdly, we can contribute generously to the Good Friday Collection. I think it's especially important this year to contribute as tourism and pilgrimages have been limited, creating incremental economic pressure on many who live and work in the region. I hope this background has been helpful. Thank you in advance for your prayers and financial gifts for the Holy Land and for our sisters and brothers who live and work there. Hopefully at some point in the not too distant future, some of us from our parish who've been on pilgrimages can host a gathering to talk about our experiences and answer questions to help those who might be interested in making a pilgrimage in the future. Thank you for listening. Monsignor, is there anything you'd like to add? Just to say that, you know, we take up this collection for the Holy Land every Good Friday, year after year, and it seems to me that we, we don't do it with, with very much background information. We don't do it with very much sophistication, and so I wanted Catherine to come in and talk to us a little bit about it so that we can make the contribution in a, um, a more intentional way, perhaps. Um, as a person who has visited some of the Christian sites in the ancient world, I also want to say that it can be an, an amazingly, unexpectedly valuable thing to do. And the money we give to this, you know, not only supports the sites, but also helps ongoing study of those sites, which uh, redounds to the increase of our insight um, about our faith and its history on down through the years. So um, it's important, and, and please be generous. Catherine, thank you so much. Thank you. For, for coming in. Thank you. All right, well. And Megan, do you wanna uh, tell us how they can actually contribute? On Friday, you can bring an envelope from your packet for the Holy Land collection and put it in the collection basket. You can also mail that envelope in. Any cash or checks that are put in the baskets on Good Friday will go to the Holy Land collection. You can mail a contribution to the parish office and you can go on to the online giving page on our website and put your donation in under Special Collections Holy Land. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, otherwise, um, I want to mention at this point that, well, I just want to warn you about Triduum liturgies this year. They're certainly not being conducted under the severe strictures that we had last year, but they're still going to be, unfortunately, quite a bit different from what we're used to at visitation. And I'll tell you, nobody does Holy Week like visitation. We really do it well. But Pandemic circumstances require us to change things, you know, by order of the city and the diocese. So for instance, on Holy Thursday, there'll be no foot washing this year. Um, there'll be no formal procession of the Holy Eucharist this year involving the choir and whatnot, you know. Uh, Good Friday, I think, looks largely the same, except we'll have to venerate the cross from a little bit of a distance. And then, uh, some of the rites attending to baptism on Easter Vigil will look slightly different also. So I'm just bringing this up to let you know. Now Alejandro Manso, our liturgy director, has provided me with a, a message he also wants me to convey to you. During the Triduum liturgies, there are times that, uh, well, there are going to be some sung responses. Congregational singing is uh, still uh, not encouraged in the diocese, uh, still suspended. But for uh, some of the short sung responses uh, in these unique liturgies, if you happen to softly sing in response behind your mask, that's okay, that's okay. All right, we hope to completely return to congregational singing in the near future. Alejandro happens to be in the room, so I can look over at him and see if I missed anything. Did I get everything right? 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay, they, they're telling me I told you a, 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 an inaccuracy. The diocese allows congregational singing, I think, in kind of a limited degree. No, behind masks. Behind masks, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, we've elected here to, to hold off on that just a little bit longer. I do think that hymnals are coming back soon. Yeah, maybe even sooner. So people can follow along with readings and whatnot. Yeah, hymnals are coming back. Holy water by the doors are coming back. So we're making slow progress, slow. Okay, seems like there was something else I wanted to mention. You want me to mention about sign-ups, right, Megan? I want you to mention that all the seats have been assigned. Yeah, for, for the Triduum liturgies, every seat is occupied with the slight exception of the vigil. We still have a few seats left for the Saturday 8 o'clock vigil if you're interested in coming to that. Otherwise, everything is booked up, right? Right. So, okay. No walk-ins. Okay, thank you very much for that. And you know, it pains me to say these things, folks. I'm very, very sorry. I hope that next year we'll finally be through this and back to a, a more, a more uh, normal situation. Okay, well, if uh, my uh, companions here don't uh, have anything else for me to relate to you, then I guess I'll say goodbye for now. I'll see you next week. May you have a blessed, blessed Easter, and God bless.